In this video, we'll talk about the medicine we use in gout, their mechanism of action, and what you need to know for your exam. So first of all, let's remember the amino acid, it's converted to uric acid, and the uric acid is excreted in the kidney. Now, some of the uric acid will be reabsorbed to the blood through this receptor right here. And let's not forget about how amino acid is converted to uric acid through xanthine oxidase enzyme. And we have two medicines that can inhibit this enzyme, allopurinol and febaxostat. Now for the reabsorption receptor, probenicid can inhibit it, and so uric acid will be excreted more through the kidneys. Now scientists thought about what if we can convert uric acid to a more soluble product, and so we can excrete it more easily and prevent its reabsorption through the kidneys. And they were able to find some medicine that can convert uric acid to allantoin, which is soluble. And these medicine are raspberry case and piglutogase. Now let's talk about each of the medications separately. The first one is allopurinol. Allopurinol is the first line treatment for gout, but it has two main issues. The first one, it's contraindicated in acute kidney injury people. But that does not mean it's contraindicated in chronic kidney disease. It can still be prescribed in CKD patients. And the other issue is in certain people with a gene HLA B5801, they develop a high sensitivity reaction like Steven Johnson syndrome. And that's usually tend to be present in patients who are from Asian ethnicity. So you have to test these patients for this gene before prescribing allopurinol. And they like to ask about this in the boards. Now the next medicine is probenicid. Now probenicid is contraindicated in acute kidney injury as allopurinol, and it causes nephrolithiasis. Now keep in your mind, probenicid is not used for acute gout attacks, it's only for prevention of the recurrence of these attacks. Next one is febaxostat. We talked about this mechanism of action similar to allopurinol by inhibition of xanthine oxidase. The main difference is it's much more expensive. Now the last one is piglutogase. From the name, I want you to remember two things. See the first letters here, pig. It means it's derived from the pigs. And the other thing, it is pigulated. It means that there is polyethylene glycol added to the initial structure of this medicine. And this is important, why? Because it increases the half-life and it acts as a chaperone and prevent its secretion from the kidneys, which means that this medicine can be prescribed in a long term, like Q2 to four weeks for each dose, which will make the patient and the physician happy as well. Now, one important thing about this medicine, as we mentioned, it is derived from pigs, which means it's mainly protein. And whenever it, it is administered into our blood, our white count will recognize it as an antigen and it will produce antibodies against it. That means its efficacy can be compromised at some point. And the way we can figure this out is by measuring antibodies against piglutokase. But this is expensive. So there is another way we can figure this out by measuring the uric acid before the next dose. And if the levels of uric acid are elevated again, it means that the previous dose did not work. And this means that the medicine has failed and it has antibodies against it. And that's it for this video. I'm going to talk about these medications again when we talk about gout and figure out which one is the drug of choice and which one is the second line and third line and how to use each of them. Hope you guys learned something and see you in the next one.